Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have another episode in our Spoiler Spotlight series in which I talk about, well, spoilers and tell you what my thoughts are on them. But before that, just a quick reminder to click subscribe if you enjoy my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and your support means everything to me. And today we're going to be talking about Golem Scheming Guide. For one color, some one black, it's a legendary creature, Halfling Horror 2-1 with Whenever Golem Scheming Guide attacks, look at the top two cards of your library, put them back in any order, then choose land or non-land. An opponent guesses whether the top card of your library is the chosen kind. Reveal that card. If they guessed right, remove Golem from combat. Otherwise, you draw a card and Golem can't be blocked this turn. So I really, really love this card. I'm a sucker for black two drops that give card advantage of some sort or that have mini games stapled on, which is why Keen Duelist is one of my favorite cards in the game and has been ever since it was printed. And this card has quite a few things going for it that I think make it even better than Keen Duelist. So I'm really, really excited about putting this in a ton of decks. I haven't opened it yet in all of my packs, but I certainly will be looking to get a few of them. And why do I think it's so good? It's because of multiple different reasons. The first thing is, there's no real downside to this card. It's basically all upside, except for the fact that you're giving your opponents a tiny bit of information about what's on the top of your deck. So obviously you've got a nice little mini game going on, and before anything else, you already got a nice little bit of top of library manipulation going on here, so you can guarantee what your next draw is going to be. Whether you draw it with Golem's ability or during your next turn depends on how well you game your opponent, but in any case, you can kind of guarantee that you're going to be drawing whatever you need on your next draw, which is a great ability to have on a two drop to be honest. The mini game is interesting and it's something that I really look for in cards in Commander, creating special situations or things that happen differently in every game. And this is certainly that. You can play some mind games with your opponent. You might see two lands on top of your library, but your opponent doesn't know that you've seen two lands. So you basically have to get them to guess wrong. And that's where the mind games come in. You can start being like, oh, maybe it's the land, maybe it's not. Start messing with their head and hopefully they get it wrong. There's a 50-50 and most of it is going to be luck at the end of the day, but some people might be really good at convincing their opponents. This reminds me a lot of the game Carrot in the Box that Jimmy Carr plays. If you've never seen that, you should definitely check it out on YouTube. It's really funny. But the last part is what makes this card really great. Usually these kind of cards have a downside if you mess it up and your opponent guesses right, but this one really doesn't. If you attack with Gollum, it doesn't even matter if they have a bigger board than yours or any creature that is better than him. He essentially can't die because he's either going to become unblockable or he's going going to get removed from combat if your opponent guesses right. So that makes it really, really strong. This is a card that can't really die in combat on attack. That's a very interesting ability to have on a two drop. It makes it really good for aggressive strategies because you can just swing in and if you get it right, you're drawing an extra card. If you don't, you're getting card selection and this guy is still going to live anyway to try again next turn. So it's going to stick around and be incredibly annoying for your opponents unless they waste a removal spell on this, which I don't think anybody's going to be doing because it's not really a threat of any sort. Where it gets even better than that is if you manage to put it in a deck that can about combat triggers or combat damage because 50% of the time this is going to be an unblockable two drop. That makes it really good in those kind of decks. So it might even be good in something like Yuriko because it doesn't actually even care about the combat damage that much. 50% of the time this is going to be unblockable and you're going to be able to return it to your hand with ninjutsu. That's an interesting use for this card although it might not be reliable enough to do consistently. In any case I just think there's so much cool stuff packed into this two drop. So many interesting things going on, so many cool ways you can use it. I'm really looking forward to playing with this. So there you have it. Those have been my thoughts on this new spoiler. What do you think about this card? Please let me know in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!